This morning, our series of dishes focusing on a condiment that is strong in flavor and tradition. Chili crisp has a long history in China, but now its popularity is blooming around the world, including right here in this country. Leading brand La Gan Mao is inspiring new chefs to put their own spin on the topping. Think of something that could go on pizza, um, pizza dumplings, and ice cream. How does that work? Nancy Chen met one chef who adds her signature chili crisp to just about everything you can think of. Crunchy and textured. I love that sizzle. A bright collision of chilies and spices simmered in oil. It smells really good. Chinese chili crisp isn't spicy hot, but the condiment is on fire. Long ladled onto classic Asian dishes like dumplings, noodles, and stir fries, chili crisp is exploding in popularity, even expanding to the dessert menu. Is there anything you can't put it on? I have yet to find something <laughs> you can't put it on. If it's edible, you can put it on. Chef and Fly By Jing CEO Jing Gao adds her unique spin to the traditional topping by sourcing 18 ingredients exclusively from her hometown in Sichuan, China. Red chilies that are fruity, um, mild heat, super fragrant. The high quality ingredients from Chengdu, including Sichuan pepper and fermented black beans, aren't readily available elsewhere. But Gao gave us an idea how they all come together in her Los Angeles kitchen. What is the appeal here? Is it the spiciness, the texture? There's something about it you can't really put your finger on, but somehow it just works with everything, mm -hmm. right? It is basically just the components of chilies and oil. But when you add in those extra layers, that's what gives the chili crisp the extra dimension of flavor. And now the flavors are infused into the oil. Families in China have enjoyed their own time-honored recipes. And that's Mapu Tofu right there. Yes. But it became widely commercialized when a Chinese noodle maker bottled and branded her version. Log and Ma now produces more than a million jars a day for fans in more than 30 countries. We're playing a part in preserving that tradition by pushing it forward, by introducing it to new audiences. A culture and a tradition, if it doesn't evolve, it dies. So we want to play a part in evolving it in our own way. After leaving her tech industry job, Gao opened a restaurant in Shanghai focused on locally sourced ingredients before traveling the world as a chef in pop-up kitchens. For a very long time, people had not just a lack of awareness about what Chinese cuisine was, but also um, additional bias against it. Like that it's oily. That it's oily, that it's unhealthy, that it's low quality and should be cheap. Right, and so if those are the attitudes that people have towards Chinese cuisine, then there's no incentive for anybody to really bring anything of quality out. And it's about more than just the food too, when you talk about those perceptions. Absolutely. In 2018, Gao launched a viral Kickstarter campaign to fund her own signature chili crisp. And with more people cooking at home during the pandemic, her company has grown tenfold, churning out nearly a million jars in the past year. The U.S. chili crisp craze isn't limited to store shelves and kitchen counters. Restaurants are also making it their own. That's two really good things together. Famed Brooklyn pizza maker Polly G recently partnered with family-run Xi'an Famous Foods for a pie centered around their secret recipe made up of 30 fragrant spices. This is Xi'an Famous Pizza. What do the chili crisps add to this? Texture. Even with more than 50 pizzas on the menu, G says this one quickly became a hit after its debut. Mm. We're eating pizza that's made out of an oven that came from Italy, and it's using spice that is inspired by something that people in China have been eating for centuries. And it's all made here in America. <laughs> Our goal is to change the conversation about Chinese food to elevate its status in our culture. So we're really here to um, uplift all marginalized cultures, not just Chinese, and we're doing so through flavor. A melting pot of taste, melting together tradition and innovation. I have made a version of a mezcal paloma. There's a rim of mala spice. Oh. And then uh, a little bit of the chili crisp oil as well. Ah, well, cheers. Cheers.
cheers to you too, yeah. Nancy Chen. It's not even 9 a.m. and I already want pizza. <laughs> and I guess thinking, what? I'm going to have me some pizza today. <laughs> I'm thinking some dumplings myself. So, I, I, I want I got one of those the cocktails, pizza. but I, I can <laughs> confirm that Chili Crisp is terrific on vanilla ice cream. Yeah. You've tried it as well. Yeah, we did. Uh, and you we can tried. actually make it at home. I've made Chili Crisp at home. It involves usually one from or scratch? two. Yeah, from scratch? Well, not from scratch. I mean, I buy the ingredients and make it. But what does scratch <laughs> really mean? I'm not getting the... Uh, Buying the ingredients and making it. Okay, yeah. I buy the ingredients and make it. It usually has one tricky ingredient, like star anise uh, or anise. How do you say that? I've, we say anise in our house, but who am I to... But it's worth it, is what I'm saying. It's uh -huh. very good stuff, yeah. How complicated is it? Uh, you know, just heat, dump it all in, a couple of, there's an order, you follow. It's like dancing, which I can't do, so actually it's very complicated. <laughs> no, no, notice, John, that he looked at you to say, how do you say anise or anise? Because, you know, looking over here, I'm like, Ugh. <laughs> Well, we'll be, getting, we'll be getting some responses if yes, I was wrong. Yes, yes, yes.